Uh, hey, all right. <laughs> all right, so Horia, do you want to lead us off? Oh, um, thank you. Thank you, Todd. Um, hi, everyone. Um, we would like to kind of um, stand in front of you guys and, and present our our experience with, with uh, the work that we've done at uh, uh, Scotiabank in one of the departments. Um, uh, but before we dive into into the presentation, why don't we uh, introduce ourselves? So, uh, David, do you want to start us? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, David De Silva. I'm the Vice President of uh, Technology for our Global Wealth Management Division at Scotiabank. Scott? Scott. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Maria. So, Scott Parsons, I'm the Managing Director of our Wealth Digital Transformation Team at Scotiabank, uh, partnering closely with, with Dave and Horia. Thank you, Scott. Um, and I'm Horia Balog. I'm an Agile Coach with Scotiabank, um, um, and and I'm privileged to to work in this group to to drive this uh, all this this very interesting work to us. Um, without further ado, why don't we just uh, job, uh, jump into the deck? Um, uh, can can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, so. Um, um, David, I think I think it, it's easier if we if you start us off, right? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I think what we wanted to talk a bit about was the agile journey that um, we've been going on within our wealth management uh, group at Scotiabank. Um, you know, I came. I, I've been in my job. I've been the the VP of technology for for wealth for about five years now. I think about four years ago we identified the need to to really make some changes the way we deliver our technology for our business partners. So when, when I came into the group, I think we were we were pretty much a waterfall shop. There was, you know, people said we did agile. I called it anarchy, uh, not agile, because what, what we would do is, you know, we would get to the end of a project and, you know, we wouldn't have all the scope defined. So we just start throwing things overboard and adding things and doing whatever we had to do to get something delivered. And, 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 and you know, people used to say that was agile at Scotiabank. Uh, I don't think that was agile. I, I call that uh, anarchy uh, with it within a project team. So we we took a step back and we decided how are we going to deliver um, uh, for our business partners in, in a way that that helps us rather than just like you know they they tell us their requirements, they throw it to us, and you know six months a year later we throw something back at them, and it wasn't what they wanted. Uh, it's not not what they thought they were going to get. It also wasn't uh, meeting the business requirements because they changed along the way but we stuck with a very static document. So as, as we went through that, we decided let, let's take a look at this agile thing. Let's see, let's see what agile is. And, and you know, we support multiple business lines. We have a very complex technology landscape uh, that we, we have in place, uh, you know, over 200 applications that need to talk to each other. Uh, some of them are specialty platforms in the sense that they're very niche skills, things that, um, uh, things that you can't just get off the street. We have to hire and train and do all kinds of things. And, and we are we are a bank, and you know we're we're risk adverse. So we don't want to we don't want to just do uh, anything willy nilly. So we have to we have to really figure out how we're going to do this. Um, we wanted to find a way to deliver faster for our clients, like get things out to them faster, start to achieve value uh, sooner in the process rather than all of it right at the end, and and not uh, understanding what we were going to deliver. Um, uh, it was going to have the value that we wanted. Uh, we wanted to improve the quality. We wanted to make sure that um, uh, you know what we were delivering was of quality, not just to get something out the door. Um, and we wanted to be able to respond to the changes. The regulatory environment in the banking space and the wealth management space today is crazy. It's changing on a daily, if not uh, sooner basis. Uh, so we're we're constantly sort of interjecting requirements into all the things that we need to deliver. So looking at all that, we decided what, what are some of the ways we could do this? And, and we looked at uh, a Kanban as a method for us to better track our, um, our, our work streams, right? So how, how are we working? How, are we, how do we, we track the work that we have on the go? We, we reevaluated the way we were organized. So rather than being organized around departments and around, um, around applications, we, we, we organized around value streams. Uh, so around product in, in, in essence. So, so teams were responsible for delivering on a product as opposed to delivering on an application, and, and so we we went through that transformation, and and then and then we we also uh, took the the additional step. While this was originally driven from a from an IT perspective, we we took the step of then of going out to our business partners and saying, why don't you join us on this journey? 
uh, and we we got the uh, we got the acceptance of that actually quite quite easily from our business partners, and hence we have Scott here with us today, who who's actually from the wealth man wealth management business group um, uh, to be part of the to be part of this journey. So that was that was you know the the endeavor we embarked on. Um, and Hori, I'll go to the next slide. And, and uh, sorry, I forgot to say this at the beginning. If if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. I'd rather keep this interactive than than me just. Uh, present to you and Hori and, and Scott. So any questions, you know, maybe we can use the hands up function in Teams um, to do that. And, and we can we can just uh, we can try it that way. So anything along the way, just just stop me. And I got one already, Michael. <laughs> yeah, hi, David. Uh, I'm just curious. Why did you decide on Kanban? Out of all uh, the three walks, why Kanban? I, I, th I think it was, uh, you know, uh, there was multiple reasons, but but I think it was just a we we were trying to find a way that we could really track our track our work and, and and improve our work function, track the track the things that we had in our backlog and, and really work through it. We're constantly getting getting um, new backlogs. I think Scrum was looked at. I, I think we we went back to to the Kanban method just to have a better tracking of work streams. And I know Horia could probably answer this a little bit better as we went through that that journey. So, so um, can I suggest that? Uh, uh, thank you, David. So, I mean, I, I think let's keep track of the questions, and then we can dive a bit deeper at the end. Just because otherwise, I'm, I, I would like to try, try to go to the whole content. So, uh, I think this is good enough for now, Michael. You can follow up with us either at the end and then offline to kind of get into more details. But sure. Okay. Does that so make go sense? to the next slide. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. So, so what was our what was uh, some of the challenges that we had to overcome as we went through this process? So, so there was there was a lot, and and there's a few on here. There was probably a lot more than this if if you really went into it. But you know, lack of lack of knowledge about about what agile was and how agile should work. Like I like I said earlier on, like what we what we called agile in Scotiabank wasn't agile. Um, and so so what what was it? And and actually reeducating some of our business partners who thought you know whenever you talk about agile, it's a bad thing. So we we had lack of lack of knowledge. We we had lack of a maturity in the process. So we had you sort of embarked on it in a, in a few little areas in the bank. Um, nothing really significant. Uh, so you know rather than um, uh, go at it at, on a piecemeal basis and try to do this from a you know one lab at a time kind of process, we we went all in um, and, and and did this um, uh, as a big bang throughout the whole group. Uh, we transformed the whole group at one time. Um, you know, we had uh, we we had to figure out a better way of of, of communicating uh, between the business, what the business expected, and what technology was delivering. I, I think that you know we we were like I said in, in in the previous in the previous iterations of how we did development, it was you know someone writing out a document and then throwing it over the fence and saying deliver this. So finding better ways to communicate, um, we had to we had to look at you know. How do we how do we actually come up with what is a minimal viable product? Um, that was that was obviously a, a big problem, and, and and still to today, I think I don't think it's been completely solved. Uh, what is a minimal viable product that you want to deliver for your business? So so th those expectations and communications needed to be um, um, completely ironed out and and straightened out because I think over time we we had gotten into a place where we weren't communicating effectively. Uh, and then you know we we had uh, evolving business processes and business needs again things changing on the fly regulations coming in uh, from all over the place um, we we had uh, you know for for a few years we we went through cycles of cost cuts and and things that you know, we had to, we had to continue to deliver but uh, find a way to deliver cheaper um, better and faster and and while I don't think that agile necessarily uh, delivers uh, delivers that promise of being cheaper. Uh, what it does let you do, though, is prioritize so that you get the most important things first. And, and maybe when you get near the end, you don't need to do those last few steps. And, and so maybe you save money that way. So it was it was coming up with those 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 different processes and and meeting the business needs without necessarily delivering um, all of the content like the kitchen sink and and everything else on top of that. Uh, next slide, I think, Coria. I think that's you. Thank you, David. So I think I think uh, Scott, you'll take it over from here, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks, Aurea. Thanks, Dave. So um, first off, Dave, kind of kind of interesting and 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 uh, enjoyable listening to you, kind of recite the history, thinking about the, the journey we've been through. So I was one of those guys that was writing the big documents and throwing them over to Dave at the time that all of this happened. So 
Um, you know, as Dave mentioned, I, I've kind of spent the, the majority of my career on, on the business side, working in our in our wealth businesses, primarily in in kind of head office strategy type type jobs, and, and was very close to the you know to the to the technology side of, of, of what the businesses desired. Um, I would say both before we made this shift, and, and you know, and after we made this shift. And I, I think back to to some of the big programs that we put in, where you know, you, you, we we would hand, and I'm sure everyone on this call can appreciate it. You know, a large BRD over to the to the technology team, and you get something a little um, a little different than you would have hoped. And the business has changed so much because you know these things take time to implement. And and um, you know, and also it was part of the business when we when we made the transformation. And so, um, you know, I'm gonna expand a little bit on on what Dave said and in, in, in talk about uh, the solution and, and what did we what did we put in place? Um, and I actually don't even wanna position it as the solution because, you know, Dave alluded to this as well. We're still continually refining these things. Um, and the, you know, the, the, the little bullet here under the, the solution call out the Kanban-based agile method, uh, customized to the needs and context of the organization, that's a that's a critical that's a critical call out in terms of how we think about organizing ourselves and how we think about operating. Um, we we've taken you know the agile principles and the Kanban methodology, um, but you know we're not doing agile for the sake of doing agile. Right? We're doing agile so we can deliver. Um, you know, good results for for our businesses, and so, you know, Dave, Hori, and I, and our and our management team spend a lot of time talking about and thinking about the processes that we have in place and uh, the continual evolution and sharpening up of those processes, so that we can become uh, you know closer to our businesses. We can deliver, um, we can deliver, you know, better products that we can we can roll them out in a more effective way, and 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 you know, I know Dave was talking about you know our our continual evolution in defining MVPs and 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 you know what will resonate with our end users, whether it's our advisors on the business side or, or, or on our advisory business side, or or you know our end clients in terms of what we're building from a from a digital presence perspective. So um, you know what we have outlined here on the slide is 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 really the four step process that we that we have in place now. Uh, primarily focused on intake, you know, opportunity canvas, story mapping, and then backlog and delivery. Um, and I'd actually would add a fifth in here around uh, the, the 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 rollout training change management element, which is which is um, so critical to the success of you know of anything we do, particularly when working with a, a you know um, complex uh, complex systems with uh, with a very large number of end users. So. Um, that's that's kind of how we're you know how our processes are organized today. Uh, you know I think this has this has uh, again speaking and 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 you know I'm part of this 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 team now obviously on the product side of things. But uh, I, I you know if we were to speak to our business partners about um, the results we've seen from this, um, there's no doubt that it's allowed us to uh, build better technology, build um, build technology in a way that is much more in tune with uh, with their needs. That is much more reflective of truly what they want, not not necessarily always what they think they want. And our ability to kind of incrementally work with them and deliver, um, and really, frankly, more than anything, bring the businesses closer to the work uh, on a on a daily basis um, has really you know improved our ability to I think deliver much, much better product uh, and, and much better technology solutions. So uh, maybe we flip to the next slide. I think we have a, another drill down. Yeah, so, and so, so how do we how do we maintain this close and, and, and constant partnership with our businesses? Um, you know, I guess first off, um, the, the leadership um, being deeply connected and coordinated. So Dave, Horia, myself, the, the leaders of our respective businesses, the leaders of our operations team, um, we we are joined um, day in day out. I think this is my fourth call of the day with Dave uh, so far, and it's only one o'clock. So it's um, you know we don't we don't go off into our own worlds and then 
you know, touch base once a week to see where things are at. It's a, uh, it's a constant ongoing kind of collaborative partnership, uh, you know, amongst ourselves, you know, again, our business, our business leaders and our, and our operations team. And, 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 and quite honestly, that it, it doesn't work without that. Um, you know, that, that level of, of collaboration is just, uh, it's, it's essential to, to, uh, you know, our overall success in terms of, um, what we've done on the technology side. So, you know, migrating to kind of the concept of the value stream um, and the value stream owner. So, so putting in, you know, the leadership structures across um, across the different value streams. And we've organized ourselves, you know, by when we say value streams, we mean things like, you know, we would have a portfolio management value stream. We would have a, a Scotia Online value stream, uh, CRM value stream, things like this. Um, and, uh, you know, those, those individuals, just as David and I are, are, are deeply in sync and connected are deeply in sync and connected with the respective product owners for those areas as well for the value streams. And, and there can be, you know, at times multiple product owners within a value stream, depending on the, the magnitude of work that we have on the go. Um, but the, 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 the product owners and the value stream owners, again, it, it's about, it's about the constant collaboration and partnership and you know they they sit together um you know it's interesting we the value stream owners are technically roll up into into david's world the product owners technically roll up into me um but i think if you were to ask them they would identify as a team more at the lab and value stream level than they would say in an organization that i run or an organization that dave's runs it's 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 the daily you know they're shoulder to shoulder or at least they were when we were allowed to be in the office but they're uh, still still closely connected, uh, you know, even in a virtual world. So, uh, and then from a product owner perspective, so we're actually part of the business. I, I report up in through the business, um, and that's always been the case with with the product owner group. Um, and we, you know, I, I sit on the the same floor as all of the the heads of all the various businesses. Um, I'm part of the fabric of of uh you know of all of those businesses that we we hire POs quite often that come out of those businesses and have built careers there and, and have a deep level of of understanding of not just the Scotia businesses but but often you know the, the the broader wealth management industry and and can really um can really go in and and represent our, our various stakeholders very well uh in the labs. So um so, so, so that's kind of you know how we've how we've done it and how we've looked at it, and and how we're organized. And Hori, I think I flip it back to you. Uh, no, this. Oh no, sorry, I've got one more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, so, so this is uh, you know this is this kind of shows how we've uh, how we've started to visualize some of the work across um, the different the different levels of the organization. So. Um, you know, flight level one operational, this is kind of at the, really at the, at the lab level. So, and I'd say this is where probably where we started out um, with, with, uh, you know, really a deep focus on, on visualizing our work at the lab level and, and, and how we, um, how we bring transparency into what's being done, um, you know, bringing obviously not just the, 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 the team that's using you know the the Kanban board to organize themselves, but also bringing our businesses directly in front of you know the boards that that you see here. And so, kind of flight level one, we have operational at the individual lab level, and then you know from there we've 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 kind of um, built it up further and further. Where we uh, you know we we then rolled it up to a value stream level, which can often uh, include many different different labs or, or several labs within that value stream. Um, and the purpose there is, you know, we're starting to get into, I guess, what you could kind of call a little bit of a, an air traffic control type type situation where we're looking for for, for points of um, of coordination across uh, what's being built and delivered that that is, you know, is critical to the success of the individual projects themselves. And then flight level three, um, we, we kind of called this out as our portfolio management we're using like we're using some of the the investment management lingo here for the businesses that that we support but this is this is a roll up of everything we're doing and uh, i think the the last number i heard we've got 
37 initiatives going on right now for uh, you know a very significant amount of money. So there's there's a there's a there's a, a huge amount of coordination that needs to take place across the value streams and across the the individual labs. And you know the the, the leadership teams really use the the, the portfolio management board or the uh, you know the 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 we call it I think the big board or really the the uh, the, the board that represents everything to um, again stay coordinated and and connected and look for those those points of um, of interdependencies across what we're doing um, you know if we're delivering uh, within one value stream but there's a there's a dependency in another value stream where does that become evident uh, if we're seeing you know a blocker in one in in one area and then that is going to hold up something in entirely you know in another value stream then this is the mechanism we use to to try and identify that and and frankly it's also the mechanism that that we use to try and um stay organized at a at a leadership level around everything that's that's on the go uh where we can we can uh you know meet around this and and uh and really make sure we're resourced properly and um, you know, we're managing capacity correctly and, and whip limits within within the labs, uh, you know, and and so on. So lots of lots of great discussion that uh, that certainly happens around each of these these different uh, levels of uh, of visualization. Now, Hori, I think I'll I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Uh, this is great. So uh, you guys have made it very easy for me now. Um, let's dive a bit into. So this was this was a great kind of. Uh, overview. Let's dive into some of the aspects of what what does this look like when we started to actually make these things happen, right? So um, I'll break it down into a few things. Like for example, uh, the, the 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 core management team driven by by David and, and Scott, they focused on some of these items here, right? Uh, closer collaboration, transparency, uh, heavy visualization. Uh, try to be as comprehensive as possible, right? Um, track and and over communicate sometimes right everything that we have on the plate like what's what's the good things where do we make progress but also what the challenges are so that we have an opportunity to create that context and ask for help if we need to from either uh, some of our partners or from 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 uh, the leadership or anybody else right um we we, we were looking kind of both uh, left bound but also right bound to say well we even if we want to organize ourselves ourselves better with with the, the value streams and the portfolio, we still need to focus on how well is Agile working for the teams, um, both from the point of view of the, the core Agile practices, the collaboration and everything else, but also from the point of view of DevOps and uh, technical practices, right? So we, we are still an IT shop, uh, at least on, on, a, on a heavy part of that. Um, and then uh, the, the, the bottom there was, was balancing demand and capacity. That's what That was one of the pain points throughout the organization. There was, there was always an unevenness where Everybody felt that they're they're under a big heavy cloud, right? So that's where we focused from that point of view, and and the management team did a great job of stepping in to say, okay, so how do we how do we take that big heavy stone off of everybody's back, right? Um, going forward, uh, so there, there's a there was a handful of coaches us kind of uh, trying to kind of lead some of that stuff from the actual adoption point of view, and and again, point number uh, item number two here on the slide is is we were always aligning to into the direction that Scott and David said, right? They, we needed to kind of be aligned to say everything that teams and the value streams and everything else do and the product owners, the way they prioritize and everything else needs to align into a, a better cause, some kind of a, of a higher level direction, right? Um, so yeah, so we tried to cover training and and all the advising of the teams and all the different roles on the projects and then uh, the coaching that came with that. Um, and and the last point that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at there is it's basically continuous improvement, which is as much as we made a significant amount of progress here, there's always, always more work to be done, right? I, it, it's not a given. I don't know in, in which world, and if anybody wants to kind of chime in to say we've solved that problem, please, 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 but we're we're still working on it. We're still checking it, right? Um, going forward, um, here, here's, this is what I, so some of the reasons we had some of these things here, humble beginning. So uh, please, everybody that feel like, feel like laughing, put yourselves on mute for now, but uh, it, there's a point here too. We started with something, and we started uh, relatively very simple and lightweight. And we started with what the teams knew about Kanban. All they knew is it's some kind of flow. So 
you can see here, there was a very basic design of some of the things that the teams were doing. Um, uh, so, and what we did is, is um, and, and maybe this is one of the follow-ups, and, and later on after in the Q&A section, Michael, we can talk about this. This is one of the reasons we, we chose Kanban is because we said, well, let's see what's in place and let's start from there. And that's one of the principles, right? Um, and then we, we um, I, I'm not going to go through all these things because they're they're heavy. Please uh, take a couple seconds to read, and if if there's any questions at the end, we can try to cover. But there's there's a few points sprinkled here, right? So I mean, uh, the Delco is uh, Scott. I think is your baby, where you kind of run with, hey, we need a cadence where we 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 listen to our stakeholders on the business side and and ingest all the new demand, right? Um, that allowed us then to set the discipline and have. Uh, again, a very combination kind of language, a signal uh, a signal to start the work was, hey, do we have the budget or not? Right, so what we found ourselves is that every once in a while we would we would get a bit of uh, uh, too much energy and say, hey, I'm going to start the work because I know the budget is coming next month. And that's, we found out that that's not necessarily a, a good idea. Um, we also worked hard at doing all this stuff to make sure that we uh, get the, Clarity and understanding. What what's our capacity, right? Uh, moving on. Uh, some aspects around how we, what were the principles or the approaches that we use for visualization. So first of all, we work with the uh, three levels of boards, right? So, and, and Scott spoke to that about the the team boards, value stream boards, and then there's a a couple of boards actually for the portfolio level, but there's boards at each level, and we we basically started to represent as much as we can there, everything, work items, blockers, risk and dependencies because we were trying to track that visually in an interactive way and very collaboratively. Uh, there, there was, uh, again, this is kind of a, a basic decomposition composition pattern where we would have projects on the portfolio board, we would have epics and features on the value stream board, and we have user stories on the team boards, and they all kind of correlate up and down the, the hierarchy. Um, there's also, because it's, a, it's an evolutionary approach, <clears throat> you will see this cross. I mean, uh, uh, every once in a call, every once in a while, I'll, I get uh, I get called. What do they call me, uh, David Scott? A, a, a hybrid coach or something? Because we're not really fully agile yet. So we'll 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 do a lot of the transparency and the board and everything else. But we we'll also have to do the dashboards and the reports and and the 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 appropriate reporting because we are a bank, right? Uh, that that's a work in progress and it's transitioning quite nicely. And from our point of view, we see a clear and and intentional cadence of migrating towards a more interactive kind of uh, flow of information here, right? Um, feedback loops. So, I mean, uh, we, we all think in feedback loops by this time. There's, there's no more kind of linear uh, thought, uh, train of thought where somebody provides direction and you go and execute and don't turn around. It's it's always kind of execute and then validate and go back and, and, and adapt the plan the best you can. Um, so you can see team value, value stream, and portfolio level uh, feedback loops. But the one that's interesting, and, and I think Scott and I, you talked about this, is the, the recognition that the organization provided to us to say, yeah, you know what, in a in a year like 2020, for 2021, we're going to give you that much more funds. Uh, that to us is a clear line of feedback to say, we must be doing something right. David, Scott, does that resonate? It, Yeah, sorry, I was looking for the mute button. Agreed. Yes, 100%. I, I I think you know the 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 ability to 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 show delivery has increased the confidence of the business of of us to be able to deliver more. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt, and it's you know the predictability starts to come you know with 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 that the understanding of uh, of where we are in the work effort. Um, there's just less surprises, right? Because they're along for the. They're, they're along for the journey uh, all the way through. Thank you. Um, and so, so here's some of the examples. And, and this is, again, the, <coughs> the reason for some of these pictures is, well, fair enough, to show off a bit, because some like this one, for example, it's a team that was really awesome where they had, uh, you can see here, one, two, three, um, three work item types in three different columns, uh, in three different swim lanes. They had parking lots for some of the items just because they uh, were dealing with dependencies that way. So it's a pretty sophisticated design. This is probably a team that uh, in about six months of project time, they were under a, under a, a heavy duty project and they they redesigned their board once a month, basically. They ripped down this this 
this was, this was before, obviously, before the pandemic, but they they regularly went back to the drawing board to say this, mm, we can do better. This doesn't work for us. So you can see now how it, it, it's a gradual progression and, and this doesn't happen over a week or two. It happens over over months and in our experience over years, right? Oops, sorry about that. Um, too much coffee, caffeine on my side. Uh, so um, a, a couple of other examples of boards that get more and more sophisticated. Um, when I'd be standing in front of this, this board, for example, people would probably start to think of me as Rain Man or something else, but uh, they are real boards that we use in the project. They are very, very valuable. And they, they to David and, and Scott's point, they provide you that level of confidence and trust that say, this guy's not only know what they're doing, but they're actually pretty discreet about showing, uh, pretty clear and, and granular about showing us where are we in the process of delivering this, right? Um, there's, there's, a, there's an example of a portfolio board in, in the working space. You can see the meeting room in the back there and everything else, right? So this, is, so this, was, uh, this was a great experience doing this. Um, and then we transitioned into, this is the current portfolio board. It is blurred out, I apologize, but some of the information might be slightly confidential, so we blurred it out, but it's basically the portfolio board that represents all the work for the 18 teams in the department, and it's in JIRA because we transitioned from physical boards, obviously, into the new, work, in, into the new working uh, model, right? Um, here's some, I'm, I'm gonna sprinkle a few more of these things to say, um, both as management and as, as, as uh, coaches, we kind of dealt with some of these things to say, uh, customer and end user feedback, it's still a challenge. We're, we're kind of constantly rediscovering that um, any any corner that we 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 let unturned, or any rock that we left, left unturned, or any corner that's dark and everything else, it, it's gonna always kind of bring up to us some some more information that we need to cover, right? Um, predictability to support the, the business unit. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that happens in the bank at large that we cannot treat with the same measuring sticks as the agile approach that we have. So we have to align into those things. Um, continuous improvement cycles. We talked about this, and then uh, the the next challenge that came to us last year by by this time was was this transition that had to happen happen quite rapidly from everybody working together, sitting elbow to elbow in the in the same space, to everybody work from home, right? Uh, and some of the story, the success stories on on the same token, um, we 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 kind of again we transitioned gradually the the status meetings into what we kind of. Uh, we started to define as, as Gamba walks, as in there's a very interactive and non-threatening and collegial and and, uh, and and very very technical discussion about where are we with the progress, what's going well, what doesn't work, where can Scott and David can help by escalating an issue or reaching out to other people or trying to kind of coordinate some some extra collaboration, right? Um, the other success stories are are the improvement in cycle and lead times, and then and then some some proven forecasting practices and we can talk about these at, at q a time so that we don't uh, we don't take too much time here um some of the lessons for 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 me and the coaches uh improved understanding of uh of, of the business value uh, the the criticality of, of 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 our collaboration alignment with the leadership so uh, to the extent where any one of us coaches would deviate from from the direction that David and Scott would set, and the the, the leadership team, it would it would get progressively, but very quickly, harder and harder to make any progress in terms of that. Right? Um, uh, team engagement variation. So there's there's all kind of themes here about what would determine how fast the teams ramp up and how well a coach would engage with the teams. Right? Um, I'll leave it for the Q and A's if people are interested. Uh, appropriateness. So this is. Another another advantage is another advantage of using Kanban is we are being very mindful about what types of techniques and practices and and, and processes and other uh, changes do we suggest at what point in time for each team for each value stream and for the whole portfolio. Um, and and then one one big lesson learned is is the 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 contagion that happened. Every once in a while we would have somebody come in and say, Oh, David, Scott, Horia, what are you guys doing there? Oh, that, that looks really funky. Uh, right, and they they would take it away and say, "Can you show us?" and and let's try to do the same thing. Yeah, and and Horia, one more thing I'll add there is is what we what we did as we we went through this was one one of the processes or or questions that I I instituted early on in in the methodology was, you know, I I would expect that every every project or program that we kick off uh, is going to be agile, 
And and rather than say, you know, let's try Agile on this project, my, my question that I asked Horia to ask everybody was, you know, tell me why it can't be Agile, right? So ask it the other way. Why why would, why should this project be waterfall? Um, and, and, you know, originally people tried to, to take us through that and, and, and um, say, oh, we just want to do this the old way because it'll be faster. And we, we shot them down um, and, and continued, the, continued to go forward with, with the agenda. And, and I think the coaches played a big part in that as well, right, to help people along the way. Thank you, David. And, and we also had a, quite a bit of share of fun listening to the reasons why projects yes. couldn't be done agile. So yeah. that, was, that was entertaining too. Thank you. Um, moving along. Um, so Scott, why don't I let you speak to the outcomes? Yeah, sure. Happy to. So um, we've got another blurry slide here for you because it's 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 an actual one and there's a lot of, you know, uh, I would say deep data on, on all the things that we have on the go right now. But, um, and I guess what we wanted to talk to on this slide is really um, how we communicate back to the businesses. Um, and, you know, we, as I mentioned before, we've, we've kind of gone through a number of different iterations around this. Um, you, know, you know, wherever possible, we want to get them in directly in front of, um, in front of our boards, in, in the labs. But for, for an executive audience, that's not always possible. Um, and these are big strategic priorities for, for our businesses. So we spend a lot of time uh, with the executive teams in the various uh, businesses that we that we support, um, you know, providing updates, getting feedback, and so um, we've gone through a number of iterations, and, and and we landed on you know what you see here, which is a little bit more of a you know a, a, of of an old school um, Gantt chart looking type artifact, but um, we you know and and that's intentional because frankly they were a little more comfortable with with this form of visualization because it's something they you know they were they understand they've seen before they've used before but we did it in a way that 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 um reflected the reality of, of how we deliver in in our agile environment and we really put this in place to um, facilitate discussion with them again at the executive level where we can't get them down necessarily all the time in front of the in front of the boards um it, in some of the color coding that you see in here with the different the different um, you know the different milestones throughout these projects, really the discussion we like to have with them is you know what's changing and why um, and getting their feedback around you know prioritization within each of these labs and here's what we're currently working on and here's how it how it's currently you know um, mapped to, to to deliver like they, they need to know at a high level when certain features are going to be available as part of them being able to effectively manage their business. But we we will reprioritize just, just even within this view. And, and so, you know, we have the swim lanes for a lot of the core work we're doing. If there's context that they have since we had last met or, or last reviewed something, you know, we can quickly sit down and see, okay, here's where the labs are, are slated to deliver what. And, 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 and here's kind of our, our projections, our, you know, our, our best thinking at the time. Uh, as to as, as to when these things will be delivered, and so, you know, we again we use this as the basis of um, of, of making adjustments and pivoting, um, rather than laying out you know a, a, a clear path from A to B and um, you know a, a rigid structure around uh, when we'll uh, you know deliver certain projects or or certain capabilities within an application where. You know, we're 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 maybe in more of a steady state delivery type model. So um, it's it, it starts to you know I was kind of alluding to this earlier. It's finding finding the systems that work for for, for the business because if they don't work for the business, they don't they don't work. Um, and and so you know this is something quite transparent transparently that we 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 tried a number of different ways. And and I think with kind of our more recent um way of visualizing this and, and 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 having discussions around it bringing it a little closer to something they're a little bit more familiar with has helped us um in in bridging the gap even even further um so i guess that, that you know my my comments on 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 this particular slide and yeah in terms of the measurable outcomes so um you know shorter time to market higher customer satisfaction 
um, faster, more cost effective. Uh, th th this is really, uh, I would say, around particularly the, like the outcomes around um, continuous delivery, right? Where we've we've tried to um, create a much more fixed capacity model against a lot of our core applications, and uh, you know, and, and deliver small increments frequently, and um, that has you know, as I as I alluded to earlier, it really allowed us to to build better technology that that is um, that is more um, that is more effective for our end users because it reflects what they want because we can get the feedback loops and we can we can be a little more nimble um, and and it you know it's had great great impacts in our business. Um, we've been able to attract a higher level of investment into our technology roadmap. Uh, I think. A large part has to do with with the structures that we put in place, and you know we built a degree of confidence up. Um, we have a higher predictability of of delivery, as I mentioned before. Um, and then we're you know we're continuing to try and work towards um, really favoring um, long running, ongoing, steady state teams um, for for so many reasons. You know I think where we've been able to do that, we get. Um, we get a much better outcome. We, you know, the teams, the teams are well established. They gel. Their whip limits are higher. They produce, um, you know, they, they produce more, better, um, and and uh, and it gives us, you know, a bit of stability. Um, frankly, in uh, you know, in our um, in our delivery capacity for our businesses, and and, and lets us get through get through more work. Um, you know the 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 on again off again, which I'm sure you know most of us have experienced, uh, just resulted in so much lost productivity and and lost opportunity um, for, for for the business uh, in terms of you know uh, uh, having to scale up a team and then and then bring them back down at the end of the project and then back up and and, and so on. So um, we've had some some real great results where we've. Uh, you know, been able to implement uh, a lot, a lot of what we talked about here today. So, thank you, Scott. Yeah. Um. Uh. Any any kind of so we're, we're wrapping out here. Scott, David, did any other comments or anything before we go into Q and A then? Right. No, I I think it would be good to get some questions at this point. Okay. Todd, over to you. All right. Hey, awesome presentation. You know, I was uh, my eyes were glued to the screen. Um, so, uh, my first question is, uh, what's next for Scotiabank? Uh, what are you? Uh, what will we focus on next? Uh, you know, after these uh, awesome wins. That's a, that's a good. It's a good question. Um, so I, I I think that you know as as we we alluded to, like we while we've been going through this journey for I think three three to four years. I think it's a it's almost four years now. Um, I don't think I don't think we're we're at a maturity where I would say that we're we're done, right? And, and I don't know if you're ever done. So so I think we we continue to evolve these processes. Um, as Horia said, you know, he he says he's a hybrid he's a hybrid coach because there's still there's still things that trickle in here um, that that take us down a waterfall path. So uh -huh. there's there's the, there's the idea of you know are we doing agile delivery yet, right? So a lot of a lot of what we're doing is agile development and delivering to a test environment. We we haven't. I don't think we've yet sold all of our business partners on on being able to take sort of those incremental um, fixes and releases, right? So 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 we we've we've got to we've got a, a little more growing to do along this space. I, I think we've got a little more bringing the business line on uh, into this space with us. While while they've been 100% behind us, I don't think they fully they fully adopted it yet. So so there's that education. And one of the things Hori and I have been talking a lot about is how do we go and coach those guys, right? We've been do, spending a lot of time coaching the people we deal with directly, but we got to go beyond that now, right? And, and and bring them along. Great, awesome, thank you. Scott, I was going to jump in, but I'll, I'll, I'll let some room for you first. Yeah, I totally agree with Dave. Like, look, it's, you know, and I said it earlier, across all these processes, I don't think you're ever done. I think it's it's it's, it's continual improvement in in looking to, to refine um, to refine how we do it, and, and and I think Dave called the biggest one out, right? It's it's we kind of we kind of do agile delivery, but um, you know in many instances we're 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 not really, uh, and and 
and that's a difficult thing because when we roll out some of these some of these applications, they're going to thousands of advisors across the country. Um, those are not people that we can put in a workshop like this and explain to them agile and and, and expect that they would have any interest in it. Um, they're they're busy servicing servicing their clients and and, and building their businesses. So it's um, you know it's a uh, it's a challenge, no doubt, but it's it's something that that we are focused on and I think need to to get better at. Thank you. Just just to kind of add to that, so a couple of things that uh, I jotted down from just yesterday and today's meetings. To your point, Scott, we are we kind of running the same circles. Um, um, uh, continuous. Uh, so adding sources of demand. We're always discovering that just when we thought that everything is on the board, we found oh wait, we didn't think of that, and that kind of not only comes in and we we have to to continue to add types of work, for example, or work item types, or sometimes even class of service. Um, sources of demand. Like there's 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 new work now that we have to look at that we need to balance with all the other work, right? So there's new type of work that we've we've known about for a while, but now it's a bit more official, right? And so the last couple of weeks we've started to talk about in, in more detail. So that's going to be on on our plate. And how does it how does it flow into our system? Uh, another one is dependency management. So we're we've, we've got some some delivery folks. We've got some registry owners that are excellent at that. But we still see some unevenness. So how do we add more structure to say we are more methodical about doing this? We, we we're not just relying on two or three people that are overloaded, and and uh, uh, we we want to have it as a structure as part of the system. And to Scott, Scott, your point, it's part of how we mature that system. Uh, and the third point is the scaling left in my my language and my words, but which is what you Scott and David said about how do we reach out to more and more folks up into the business. To clarify what we're trying to do and to to show them the benefits of what we're doing. Todd, is that good enough? Yeah. Hey, chugging along. That's great. Uh, next question: uh, uh, How do you define your vision for this transformation? So it's, it's an interesting one. I, I you know I don't know. Um, I don't know if we define the vision. For the transformation and how we operate, or if we spend a lot of time defining the vision on what we're trying to do, like what are the out, what are the outcomes of it? Um, with a lot of with a lot of the actual work, at least that's that's what I spend you know a lot of time thinking about. I don't know, David Horia, anything you'd add on the vision for the transformation of the teams themselves, which I think is the question. So I'll jump in and sorry, David, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. right. I'm trying hard, but I I couldn't help help myself here. So there's two levels of visioning here. So one is the fact that, and we described this in the deck, most of our work, especially from Agile point of view, it's it's not only that it's aligned with the vision for the for the bank and the organization, the wealth management organization, but it's it's part of the day-to-day -day work. We don't look at Agile as something that we do after we finish our day of work. So that, and that gives us enough direction and vision. So I don't know if we need to invent a new vision because we're already kind of, lining up to that. Now, if you think of this, then the next level of the visioning is, well, what's what are the goals of the bank for the for the year and for the next 10 years? How can we support from the agile work that we're doing the goals that we have at the bank level and at the, the line of business level? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I, I do 100% agree. I, I think, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, you know what? What I what I envisioned when when I when I was lo looking at this was how how do we make the the transition from business to technology seamless, right? And and it's it's very interesting when when you look at how our labs function and how they work today. If you, if you went into a lab and and someone was was describing what they were doing, I think you'd have a very hard time um, sorting out who who the PO is versus who the value stream owner is, who who versus one of the developers. Um, I think everybody is talking the same language and talking about the same end vision uh, for a project. So, so that to me is is where I wanted to see this go, so that we so that we we get to that seamless that seamless um, development and, and delivery structure. All right, ready for another question? We got a whole bunch of questions. We, won't, we probably won't get to all of them, but I'll, I'll you know we'll try. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of combining a few of these questions, um, but I, I'm wondering, 
um, how did you keep track of all those stickies, you know, from a day <laughs> food, uh, auditing? Uh, and what was your transition to JIRA or, or an online tool? What, what was that like uh, for you? Oh, sorry, that's my dog. Um, I'll just I'll just quickly uh, I'll, I'll give my my take on it. So the so the the stickies was an interesting one because they they used to fall on the floor and, and I was usually the first one in the morning and I would stick them back on the board uh, and I didn't know where they came from. Um, yeah, so 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 uh, somehow they always got into the right spot. So I'll, I'll let Horia talk about that a bit more. That being said, the transition to Jira, uh, you know, last year at the beginning of 2020. I, I think uh, you know we started talking about you know we're all going to have to disappear and go work from home for for you know what we thought was going to be three weeks or four weeks at the time, um, and and I think Horia and the coaches and I and I think some of them are on this call. We all met and said we need to get these off the stickies and onto a board. And I think within two weeks or three weeks we had everything off off of the stickies and into some form of digital um, board and, and Jira. And Hori, I'll talk. I'll let you talk about the the tracking and um, auditing. Uh, thank you, David. Yeah. So, um, so th those are two, the two aspects. So, so the first one goes more towards the the nature of our of our of our system, which is it is kind of redundant and overlapping, and and that's the hybrid nature of my right my my split personality, maybe right. So, um, it's. It's whatever we had to support processes in flight for auditing, for uh, uh, finance tracking, for everything else. We kind of had to to support that. So there was a lot of times a double gears to say let's let's do all this agile work, but let's see how my colleague sitting next to me, that's a project manager or a program director, how do they do their work, which was to report on these things and everything else. So that thing never disappeared. We didn't put up the big walls to say I'm doing my agile stuff and I don't know what those crazy people are doing. Um, and, and that was part of the deal is we were going to all transform or all fall behind. Uh, from, from, the, from the transition to, to the online world, it was, uh, it was the same level of kind of duplication where we, we did, we already, so if you remember David, like even two years ago, we talked about some teams really, really wanting to go to Jira and we said, okay, fine. Um, so, <laughs> so we've always been kind of relatively loose in terms of what do we standardize on and what, what teams are allowed to do or not. If, if some teams really felt strongly that they could operate in one way or another, that was always on the table. So by the time the the, the crisis started, we already had some some of the some of the teams and some of the leaders on the teams. They already knew exactly how to operate. They had their system set up. Quite a few of the teams had the the, the overlapping systems. We said we need to have as a backup the uh, specifically the Jira boards. But for now, run on the boards on the walls if you want to. And they were running with the physical boards, but their Jira boards were kind of there in in some state or another. Some of them were perfectly synced up. Some of them had fallen behind by a month or two. But the point is, when you go into crisis mode like this, and it's urgent, and you had some discrepancies in terms of where my uh, all my work items are, then it's it's a matter of few a few days that you can adapt. I think the challenge that's bigger is, are people used to operating that way or not? And that's what. Um, I was pleasantly surprised actually because pretty much every one person in our department just kind of naturally adapted and 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 shifted to the new mode of work. All right, hey, uh, awesome, thank you. Another question. I'm going to combine a few things. Um, how, how did you manage the roles uh, in in your uh, how you're working? So, scrum masters, product owners, value stream owners. Um, how did you manage that? and their, you know, scope responsibilities uh, and all that, that kind of stuff. So so I, I can I can start and then David and Scott help me. But from our point of view, again, that one of the principles of, of Kanban is start with what you have now. So if you remember one of the slides, we said we basically started to visualize the processes of work the way they were. So if 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 before this transformation, one of the team would have done Scrum, and they had a scrum master and their roles or just the developers, everybody equal on the team, and they had a product or anything else. We started and said, okay, how do we start to, to bring in some of the principles of Kanban? How do we go through the static method for Kanban to start to build it up and, and evolve? But the, the, the initial state was scrum by, by all means. And unless there's a, there's a specific need to say this title or role or this person needs to change role, we didn't touch it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and and I'm, I'm I'm very curious if anybody has any reasons why this wouldn't work. Please help us. Like, speak up. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, David, Scott, does that? Yeah, no, I, I can. And, and actually, I probably I, I scroll through the questions that I'll probably answer this with answering one of the other questions as well. So I think what we did is we, we started with um, we started with defining what is a value stream, right? So our first our first idea was, you know, a value stream or product was was what is a collection of applications, let's say that that support a particular function, uh, a function of value within the business. Right. So Scott alluded to one. He said um, portfolio management. Right. So portfolio management is a collection of applications that could do things like the actual portfolio management of, of, of managing a portfolio or an account for a client. It then includes reporting. It then includes fees. It then includes all kinds of things and all kinds of applications that support that. So we started there. Then, then we took those teams and we, we brought them together and said, OK, there's a senior manager that kind of manages a number of these applications. That person became the value stream owner. Right. We then we then moved we moved a bunch of people around to say, you know, that value stream now lives together in these labs, right? And, and the labs are organized to deliver pieces of value uh, to that value stream. Uh, the product owners uh, from Scott's team were then brought in to say, okay, you you now are the product owner that is associated with portfolio management. Uh, and we we tried to go one to one, and it just didn't work because of the size of the portfolio. Right, so it, it's it's probably a few to one at this point uh, that we went through. So so then and then and then we slowly we slowly iterate, iterated through the process to determine what we needed. Right, and as Horia said, then we brought in what what you you know a scrum master. You know, there there maybe not a, a it's not a title you would think about in the Kanban world, but we brought in a scrum master anyways. Uh, we brought in um, we we brought in technical leads. We brought in the things we need as we as we saw the need arise. Right, and then defined the scope. So right. I'm just mindful of the time, Todd. Uh, we've got two minutes. If we can stretch it out for a few more minutes, I see a few, a few questions kind of in the middle of the chat. I can answer in, fire, in rapid fire, but I don't yeah. know if you want to. Rapid fire. Go, 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 go. Good. Okay. So I'm looking at uh, Laura saying uh, I see a lot of similarities to service design. So uh, service orientation is a set of principles that Kanban uses. So that it's, uh, again, uh, it kind of also answers Michael's question at the beginning. The one reason we chose Kanban is because we went one at a time, one team at a time, and when the teams were designed, one value stream at a time. And when we had up enough, when we had enough of a critical mass, we did the design for the portfolio level. But each of these aspects are a service in our hands, and we're serving somebody specifically, right? Uh, the, the question after that, uh, Frank, uh, benefits to the team levels. Uh, so the last item on the slide that's still on, the measurable outcome, is less overburdening. So by virtue of actually clearly uh, showing capacity and the demand, we kind of gave the teams and people on the team uh, at least a chance to kind of manage their work in a more rational way. Um, that, that's the beginning of a, a start of an answer. Maybe we can continue that discussion another time. Uh, next one, um, how do you use Agile to predict, estimate total work on very large new tech? Um, we, we, um, the answer was, uh, Scott was talking to that slide where we have a few steps before the work ends up in the teams, which is the whole intake flow with uh, quite a bit, some some early discovery phase and then some opportunity canvassing, uh, story mapping. And then by the time it gets to the team, there's a lot of work that accumulates over time that gets it to a level where people can control that in a more reasonable manner. And, you know, we, we have restart time box. I'm wondering if, if you all would uh, like to leave us with a, you know, a final uh, statement and then we'll wrap her up. David? David? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I think, I think, you know, um, what, what I would say is, is it, it's, it's a difficult journey, especially in a large, large organization. Uh, it, it's very hard to change, uh, the way people act and the way people think on a large ship like that, but I think you know you have to keep at it. It's one it's one of those things where we just kept hammering away at it and, and redirecting people back to the 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 way we wanted to see things kind of move. And, and that's important is just to stay focused and and don't let people get back into um, old habits. So so that that to me was the way we drove this forward. Yeah, and and, and uh, you know I I'd, I'd echo a lot of that. I would just say keep keep evolving right never be done i think we we, we talked about that there's the, you know the, the system can always improve and um and you know we've we've had a lot of uh success by really staying focused on and, and not being uh complacent in in the structures that we have in place and always looking for 
for ways to to sharpen up what we do and and bring you know more value for for our business partners. So I would just say keep at it and keep keep evolving. All right. Hey, I think that's a great way to end it. So uh, um, I just voila and out for you. No, I just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for for uh, mm -hmm. for spending an hour of your time with us and listening to us. Uh, Todd, Todd, thank you for hosting us. Um, if, if there's any chance we can we can capture the questions and the comments from the chat, I'd love to kind of have a chance to kind of scan them. Yeah, everything's recorded, uh, you know, for government, so we record everything. Um, anyways, um, we're, we're, we're going to post the, the decks, uh, French and English recording. Uh, it's going to be on YouTube. Um, so we'll share with everyone who attended uh, and people who didn't attend. So uh, keep, keep an eye out for that. And thank you all for coming here. Uh, we'll see you at our next event. Thank you. Thank Good you, Todd. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.